fact, today's topic is on chronic limb ischemia, which has been prevalent around. And uh, the title say emphasizes the need of people walking because walking is the most important thing that stimulates the body to generate good vascularity to those organs. In fact, uh, to emphasize the point, we have got this child running me. Emphasize walking. Next. And the geriatric population is on the rise. In fact, the geriatric population of Tamil Nadu is higher than the other states. And atherosclerosis is a process which is universal in this group. Claudius is a Roman family name from the nickname Claudia. That's why anybody having a Claudius claudication means there is limping. Uh, limping because of vascular occlusions. In fact, this is more attributable to TAO, but the TAO is less and less common, and you don't get claudication in TAO to the extent you get it in major vessel disease. In fact, it's more proximal. TAO is more posterior, uh, lower down. Management of chronic limb. We, you assess the, the vascularity of the lower limb of all the people in the uh, camps. You'll find 20 to 50 percent are asymptomatic without anything. 50 percent are asymptomatic. 50 percent may have atypical pain. The atypical pain can be called cortical syndromes and all that. So a classic claudication occurs in 10 percent of asymptomatic normal individuals. So they need to be evaluated. And the story has got a good this thing. The more you evaluate and make them walk, the less is the number of CAD, coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is directly proportional to the PAD, peripheral arterial disease. So, what do you do? Identify the risk factors for peripheral arterial disease. The risk factors are the following 10. One, of course, is age. Age of 70 plus has got a high risk compared to others. Hypertension, black ethnicity, family history, hyperlipidemia, elevated triglycerides, smoking, male gender, known atherosclerotic in the family, and diabetes. And of course, the thrombophilia and what we call it as a homocystinemia. And this produces gangrene in the younger age group. 30s and 20s developing TAOs and atherosclerotic blocks are because of homocystinemia, S protein, C proteins, anti cardiolipin antibodies, all that are young homocystinemias. But one other rarer thing which is not being that prevalent is TAO, thromboangiitis obliterans. Thromboangiitis, which is the inflammation of both the artery and the vein, thrombus is presenting in that. And obliterants, the obliterates the growth, uh, arteries. The inflammatory thrombi in the artery and vein, the internal elastic lamina is absent in hydro uh, microscopic assessment, and thrombus is present in the clots in the artery and the vein. This is a very interesting slide to show the cause of chronic lower limb ischemia. This is for students' sake. I have written it as from A to Z, A to J, and uh, atherosclerotic is the commonest cause. Second is, of course, your thromboangiitis is obliterans, which we call it as Burgess disease. Burgess disease, which is otherwise called as thromboangiitis obliterans. Cardio embolism from the cardiac myocardial infarction or atrial fibrillation or neural thrombus, you can have an embolic manifestation and produce peripheral vascular disease. Degenerative diseases, entrapment diseases like uh, public entrapment, fibrous muscular dysplasia of the kidneys, gain cell arteritis of the autoimmune diseases, homocystinemia, inherited thrombophilia, others, job related, in people with the vibratory tools are slightly at a higher risk than others in developing brain art phenomena. And, uh, so easy to write our notes 
on atherosclerosis or a chronic lower limb ischemia is atherosclerosis J and atherosclerosis is forerunner. It occupies about 80% of the whole lot. And smoking tobacco is central to etiopathogenesis, initiation, continuation, recurrence, is all that. Whether even if you uh, had smoking and record, and if you continue to take, you will have problems. It is postulated that smoking may cause a delayed type of hypersensitivity and toxic angiitis. Immunohistochemistry analysis indicate an inflammatory and immunological pathogenesis. Cytokines and role of notch signal activation, there are at the cellular level, notch signal activation, they may contribute to inflammatory response observed in patients with Burgess disease. So atherosclerotic block is from major vessels, uh, while PAOs occur as minor vessels and what we call it as the cross through arteries. So atherosclerotic process can occur in the heart CAD and then produce an unstable angina. So now we'll go on to peripheral vascular disease, vasoacclusive lesions which is occurring into the peripheral arteries, particularly the femoral artery downwards. Vasoaneurysmal lesions, abdominal aneurysm is the standing example, is the commonest thing in vasoaneurysm. In fact, Siliagi has reported 90 to 95% of the population will have some dilated iota and 10% uh, of them can have uh, uh, past 90 years uh, vasoaneurysmal diseases. Then you can have traumatic lesions, which the vascular surgeon will study. But the chronic ischemia produces atherosclerotic, non atherosclerotic. Vasospastic disorders are what we call the Raynaud syndromes. Then there is an interesting study by, I think it's Mohan, Cups, you know, number of 631 people. Overall prevalence of PA, PAD is 3.2. This is the Madras study by the prevalence of PAD in newly diagnosed subjects was 3.5% versus 7.8% in the diabetic patients. Chronic limb ischemia. Patients with chronic limb ischemia is present with breast pain, which in pain across the base of the metatarsal heads and at rest relieved by dependency and a tissue loss, which can be ulceration, dry gangrene or wet gangrene occurring in the the lower extremities due to atherosclerotic occlusive process of iliac, femoral, and public artery. In fact, uh, public artery, iliac artery, femoral artery are commonly involved. In diabetes, the peroneal artery is not usually involved. After the advent of endovascular procedures or by transkin procedure, we have done the classification of all the peripheral vascular diseases into TASC2 classification. There's a lot of this thing. To understand that is difficult. A to T or E, initially it was E, then it became E. So A, B, C, D is based on overall success rate treating iliacs. A is preferred for vascular diseases. D is preferred for endoscopy, endovascular procedures. B and C is desired on table, uh, not on table, but on admissions. They are taken up for investigation according to the lesions, okay, whether it is endovascular or surgical. There is an article on vascular medicine by Hayat, Peripheral Vascular Disease and Practice Guidelines by TASC, revised con governing. Council meeting and inter society consensus, and this changed. There is a nice study for a long period, which is a very good study BASAL, SAL, angioplasty versus bypass trials. Does not provide guidelines to the treatment of tibial vessels because tibial vessels they take the hook on the anterior intercalcious membrane and does not address for multi level diseases. The scoring methods is phenomenally high. In fact, they have got so many scoring methods by Fontaine and 
Fontaine classification, the original classification has been there for 30 years, 30 and on years. Rutherford is an American classification. Bollinger, Grazzani, Italian morphological classifications. And then, of course, your Fontaine coding method. Signs of chronic limb ischemia. Signs of chronic limb uh, threatening ischemia on non invasive testing are the signs are ankle brachial index less than 0.4, a flat waveform in the volume recording, pulse volume recording. Now, low and absent fatal pulses in the ultrasound in Doppler or Doppler scan. The lower limb, you can have arterial blocks at various levels. The iota femoral bypass is the place where you need to do an iota femoral occlusion. It is a iota femoral blocks. Femoropopnical by bypass site in situ and autogenous reconstruction. Percutaneous interventions, distal bypasses, profundoplasty sites, endovascular sites, traps, extra anatomical consideration. The extra anatomical sites are all not following the native artery. It goes in the Shortest where, where you can have a femoral graphs where you can take lead auto filling from the other side. Then, this is a very important thing you should understand. The popliteal artery is usually involved in diabetes. So, what we call it as popliteal trifurcation. Trifurcation is three. Uh, end points, one is the tibial, one is the peroneal, and the anterior tibial and posterior tibial. So three things are there, and it should be blind. Sometimes there is no outflow at all. There is only a pore of cavity, and that has to be anastomosed with at least if it is seven centimeters in length, the popliteal bypasses work, otherwise it thromboses in the week's time. And I think this is 1912, Alexis Carroll, who got a new bar, Nobel Prize. In fact, vascular surgery, there are a lot of Nobel laureates. And he has found out the technique of triangulation, which was inspired by sewing lesions he took from an embroidery dress and still used today. In fact, Alexis Carroll he was given a Nobel Prize in 1912. And of course, next in 1948 and all that, the patient named a pontage by Kunlin. Kunlin, this is Kunlin, who actually, I think Carol is gone. Yes. Kunlin decided to do a vena iota, I mean, femoropopnical bypass. And femoropopnical bypass is called as. Kunlin's bypass. Fempop is a, usually the American way of calling it is the Fempops. Natural history of a PAD. This is an interesting study of very long period and uh, good uh, arm, each arm having more than 1000 people uh, done by the Welds in Circulation magazine. Limb morbidity and cardiac morbidity are assessed from Every five years have been analyzed. Stable claudication, worsening claudication, critical limb ischemia, non fatal events, mortalities, and cardiovascular causes, non cardiovascular causes. All that are pulled in data have all been analyzed. It has been found, fortunately, the natural history of PAD, they progress on in only 10% of the patients. Others do not do the required surgery most of the time. And the volume is raising like an oil barrel. barrel. You find uh, atherectomies and coronary stents are in the higher insertion, and unspecified PVDs are in the high. And of course, for diabetes, you have the role of diabetes meritus. Wound develops, which is ischemic, it doesn't heal. So if you have a wound, and it is, uh, and the patient is a diabetic, the WIFI classification, uh, it classifies all the components of that wound, ischemia, foot infection, and, and in diabetics produce 
delayed healing. This is already told you. A distal bypass should be anastomosed to the most distal arteries. That is a rule in this thing because beyond a point in the ankle level, it will not function for a longer time, but at least it will heal the ulcer which is present. Seven centimeters native inflow autogenous vein is possible. Always a vein is preferable, autologous vein is preferable than a prosthetic graft. That is the working rule. This is we have already seen. Where you have a femoropopliteal segment, I think you will recollect the whole thing again. With this popliteal artery with a good collateral on the side uh, is present on the close to the bone. And you have the Femoral, common femoral and uh, deep femoral is in the adductor canal. And you have to make a tunnel and bring it to the posterior side and anastomose. And uh, you should know the anatomy. Subsartorial canal, if you had attended an anatomy class, they would have said subsartorial canal, bone breeds, sartorius, vastus lateralis, and uh, now to femur. And all that will be in anatomy those days. Treatment of critical limb ischemia. The syndrome of thrombotic obliterant to the aortic bifurcation was it started in 1948 with a monumental article by Lerish. The syndrome of thrombotic obliteration of the aortic bifurcation. In fact, it was originally called as Lerish syndrome, applicable to chronic lesions. But now, acute Lerish with embolic manifestations from the acute cardiac event can also be called as Lerish syndrome, acute Lerish, all that. The syndrome of thrombotic obliterance with aortic bifurcation is the original article written by Rene Larish in 1948, the original paper by Larish. Epidemiology of peripheral arterial disease and this thing has been reviewed, and there's a review article, uh, and I think it you really need to read that. Time course of human atherogenesis. Lesion initiated, it takes about at least 20 years. Some people jokingly say atherosclerosis starts as you were born. You have a cerebrovascular disease, ischemic heart disease, leg pain, and symptomatic, without symptoms, you should be very careful. This is the coexistence of vascular diseases, particularly CAD and PAD. You have guns, have a genetic preponderance for an atherosclerosis. It may affect either peripheral arterial disease or coronary artery disease. In fact, this is from our own department in Madras Medical College, the geriatric department. The study of peripheral vascular disease in elderly and its association with coronary artery disease, they found an increased incidence of asymptomatic peripheral artery disease is common among the elderly. This is from the Indian Journal of Geriatrics by Dr. B. Krish, B. Krishna Sangha. This is how it happens. You see the x ray there. It is a plain x ray, maybe it is not uh, the x ray showing. Contrast. It is a plain x ray, but the entire bamboo spine also has iota itself is completely calcified. You can see the iota like a calcified tube, and that needs nothing. Then the aging elastic and muscular arteries. There is one thing called as pulse volume velocity, which is the one that transmits your pulse from the aortic pulsation on to the peripheral, up to the digital vessels. It takes the blood with the pulsation. And the pulsation is nothing to do with systolic artery pulsation. It is more of a pulse wave velocity, depending upon the elasticity of the arteries. So if you have a very pulse wave velocity is high, you will be able to have a good pulsations if we have a rigid pipe-like thing from the iota, there will be very minimal pulse wave velocity. 
so this is the three sites, major sites where vascular surgery for chronic limb ischemia occurs. The rest are we discuss later. Iotoiliac segments, there is common femoral profunda. This profunda, you can always do a profundoplasty because profunda is one that goes posterior to the neck of the femur. And then popliteal trifurcation is where I told you it branches into three branches and that's called as popliteal trifurcation. Now we have got a host of this thing which has happened and the patient comes to the doctor with reduced flow, pain and walking, organ dysfunction, crying of this, dying now, rest pain, necrosis and gangrene. These are all the events which normally occur in protein. And when there is a critical ischemia, when there is ischemia, claudication occurs when the proximal muscles, I mean proximal, not from the foot, it is from the leg, popliteal region, calf muscle area, produces no ulcers but claudication. This keeps happening and they have claudication, it goes on forever. And you have tissue necrosis when there is a complete blockage of tibials, anterior tibial, posterior tibial and the peroneal arteries and also the, the foot vessels. And people with tissue necrosis only have rest pain. Don't expect people with uh, femoral artery block having a rest pain. Usually unless there is a sequel of another block in the popliteal region. Pain pattern altered, reduced activity due to CAD. This is very also very important. Claudication in geriatric patients. And uh, you say I am perfectly all right. I get up in the morning. I do all my routine. No pain at all in my leg. But the pain occurs because he is not walking on the road. He makes a few steps and then stops walking. So, crying silence. That is what I am saying. Most of the time, they keep quiet. They don't walk to find out claudication. Walk to develop collateral. Pain pattern is altered, that is what I said. Reduced activity due to coronary artery disease, dense myopathy, neuropathy, and diabetes mellitus. He is actually diverse from the foot. External applicants should not be applied in ischemic limb. So diverse from the foot. He is not able to see his feet because he got the big punch due to obesity and he have got a Pedal pulsation, you are not able to see the uh, activity of the foot. Then they are all uh, been confirmed the PAD category with mortality wise, how they prefer. Then the peripheral vascular disease, it is a clinical diagnosis and there is no this thing necessary to worry about big major investigations. Because by the time you desire a treatment, only for the treatment we need the uh, investigative modality. Occlusive arterial disease, whether it is arterial, obviously you can find out. Where is the occlusion, whether it is a DVT, a top muscle, or it is occluded by physically touching the popliteal artery, you can always say whether it is a before popliteal or after popliteal. The extent of the lesion, that is also important. The effect of occlusion, whether there are signs of occlusion and ischemia. Correctable or not, that is also important. When you have entire thing from inguinal ligament to the toe, he is blocked, so there is no question of correcting. Surgical, intervascular, both, both can be done, uh, done as a complementary to each other. Albert Einstein refused surgery saying, I want to go when I want. It is tasteless to prolong life artificially. I have done my share. It's time to go. I will do it elegantly. That is what uh, Albert Einstein so, uh, said when he was informed that he has got a big diabetic aneurysm, which is a quite big one. But subsequently, when five, seven years later, when you have a cellophane wrapping available, it was not done. Open surgery was done by surgeons in UK.
So these are all the changes that take place in dry gangrene of chronic fisting. If it has been an acute fisting, it would have had edema, venous obstruction, and pain. These three are less than peripheral vascular disease. Then, all, all palpable pulses must be examined. This is where the, the, our beloved postgraduates get into problems. Because the very first day I will examine the nerves, and uh, I said, no, all the cardiac neurological nerves have uh, been examined. This, but whether you have done uh, pulsations or uh, examined, the answer is yes, but they won't have. And when they ask you, how, what is the anatomy of the femoral artery? Whether it is, at what level it divides, then he doesn't get to know that. So you have problems. So you, anatomy of arterial flow, we should know the anatomy. Public artery, whether it is medial to public vein or total artery, lateral. Uh, you have got the middle plantar and medial plantar and lateral plantar. How does it work? Join? What is the arch like? All that you have to read. Reading uh, anatomy is a very important thing for vascular disease. So invasive arteriogram, catheter arteriogram, and CT scan with HRCT, NGOCT, and all available. Non-invasive investigations, Doppler, duplex scan, pulse volume recorder, CT NGOs, and MRA, magnetic resonance angio angiography. And this is another thing very important. If suppose somebody is having vague pain, you make him confirm the PAD by making him work in a treadmill and you'll find the vascularity and the ischemia unmasked with peripheral arterial disease when the results are the yeah, ankle break index is normal at rest. The sensitivity and specificity is good enough. Never ever do an investigation which is not necessary or not useful to the patient. Here, of course, these are all the basic things which should be done and there is no invasive procedure in doing other catheter angiography which are detrimental to the kidney. Pulse, peak systolic velocity and all that interpretation of arterial duplay which is very important. The peak is important. Conventional arteriography, gold standard, value of CT or MRI. What will you do, whether it is a CT or an NGO? When you are going to do a catheter angiograph and procedures, all have to be done. You have CT done along with it. MRI is only for documentation, elderly, and actual listing. But both are, um, percentage-wise, both are sensitivity and specificity are the same. This is how clear you get the thing. The middle one, you have got the uh, public lottery missing for a small segment, and the profound up is also absent, and you have the ischemic here. Contrast medium administration, the elderly is advancing age and independent risk factor for. Contrast nephropathy after angiographic procedures. They said if the patient is not hydrated well, there is a chance of him. Similarly, dry use for MRI can produce renal fibrosis, renal related fibrosis to the body, systemic fibrosis. So these are all done when you are planning for a surgical procedure. In contrast medium, you should be very careful in advancing age as an independent. Definitely there is a risk involved in an elderly with dehydration. Advanced age should be should not be the whole sole basis of exclusion of otherwise suitable candidates for elective. Abdominal aortic resection. In fact, uh, age alone is not a, a detrimental factor, but if there are other factors, just to 
cumulatively add on to the risk. The first thing you do, don't jump to it's a chronic bliss thing. There is no ulcer, there is nothing. Uh, only features of chronic ischemia. Don't jump to surgery like uh, hernia or intestinal hernia or gallbladder. Don't risk, don't jump to surg surgical assessment and all that. Risk factors modification like controlled diet, weight, uh, cholesterol, uh, hypertension, all that. Pre operative assessment, all the four, this thing, what the cardiologists do. You become a physician and do all that. Open surgery or endovascular interviews. Till that time, you can give drugs, amputation as a palliation only. The optimal exercise program, exercise rehabilitation program, is a very designed program which needs to be done for the claudication pain to improve the circulation. Improve the circulation by meta analysis to be improved, to be very good. So there are four components which needs to be corrected before taking up a surgery. Hyperglycemia in diabetes, hypertension in systemic hypertension, dyslipidemia in fat, and altered coagulation by anti platelet uh, drugs. Good glycemic control reduces the incidence has been found. anti platelet agent control events are corrected. Blood pressure goal is 130 by 80, seventh JNC quotation. Dyslipidemias, triglycerides, and the lipoproteins, lipids. See, these programs, functional outcomes of critical limb ischemias with the exercise programs, they completely uh, they increase the blood perfusion uh, into the limb and can be used till the patient develops the rest pain. Peripheral arterial occlusion diseases cause a severe impairment of the quality of life in elderly patients. Arterial reconstruction surgery improves the quality through it still remains compared to the general population. So effects of peripheral arterial disease and CVD and quality of life definitely has some restriction. Thrombolysis associated with substantial risk of elderly and with high complication rate. Limb blood flow and vascular conductance are redu reduced with age and health. I was telling you about pulse volume velocity and all that. And of course, the era of percutaneous transluminal angioplasty for lower limb ischemia has been on the thing. Value of it is good because it can reach distal thing, recurrent thing, or wherever surgery is not accessible, uh, angioplasty. It is the same guidelines as for your heart. So you have TSEA guidelines. You have three, four people adding on to that. A good radiologist, a vascular surgeon, cardiologist, and an interventional surgery specialist. So whenever you cross a joint, the rule is, whenever you cross a joint, the vein has to be used. The vein, particularly the popliteal artery, where it has to be replaced, the bending repeatedly of this popliteal artery should have thrombosed the graft. So we normally use a vein. Otherwise, like abdomen, you can have any uh, Gagron graft. You can see the blood flow after an aneurysmectomy, the blood flow in the bifurcation graft. The early results of after surgery in participants to 25 years of age and elder, the analysis of 3,000 odd patients, it is found that it is good with the modern anesthesia and uh, anesthetic care and cardiac care. The early results of vascular surgery is good. Then a host of drugs which have been used. There are certain things that are not used because they are not available. Or sometimes they are not available because they are not useful. Vasodilators like uh, these things are not used except thrombolytics and ketoneserine 
nepidopuril, gel carnitin, rheological agents like Trintar, the antithrombotic therapy, prostaglandulins, particularly PGE1 and E2, lipid lowering agents, and all the statins, anticoagulants, thrombolytics, antiplatelets, pentoxifilin, wound management, vasodilators, anti lipidemic drugs, ginkgo biloba, and L carnitin. In risk factors, the best thing is ask the patient to stop walking, stop smoking, and keep walking, not the other way around. Smoking in the elderly, I think is elderly, we'll keep it as that he looks elderly. Self burning of the limb by cigarettes. See, the entire building is. Dark because there is no perfusion of enriched food. Then it comes. Then. So I think I've confused you enough. And you have the skin necrosis of an ischemic limb with foot gangrene, which needs the uh, BK amputation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yet another nice lecture. Uh, any questions? Dr. Yaman, you want to ask anything? Any comments or questions, please? Sufficiently explained or left in the rush? No, no, no. <laughs> That's a very detailed explanation, sir, with all literature support. It's a complete uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.